и одна из таких one of the tasks that we are facing as i think and then that we need to discuss is the possibility of cooperation because preschool education and childhood and development of children it's not only the problem of a specific country it's a generic global civilization process which uh, demands thinking of our meditation at every level. And I think that the conference allows us to see the multifaceted nature of this issue and understand childhood as the future of mankind as the process which builds the foundation for optimism because uh, on condition of course that we can agree and understand our common goals and if we look at the child as a great force which is which has into endless possibilities and uh, which requires from us the cognitive understanding because you know we uh, look at the child usually from above and I've even heard it in some presentations but I think that our task is to understand that we have that priceless gift and we need to handle it carefully, especially when we're facing the problems of uh, uh, modern society. Roga, I think, will help me to understand these new tasks, especially related to digitalization, to understanding. And one of the problems that probably we need to discuss is the problem of the context, a context that uh, Vygotsky developed and how we, how we can find the ways of development of these contexts because one of the iterations of this understanding of Vygotsky and the culture of the time back then, it has already sort of passed all over the world and now we are facing new tasks. We are facing new issues. And that's why I propose that we start this discussion. We have certain positive results of this interaction, this cooperation. I think that we uh, made this, published this book, which has been disseminated, and we received a letter from the publishers of this book. They hope that it will be useful for understanding of the approaches, and I think that our conference, our today's roundtable, will also be conducive to find a new possibilities, new ways of development of these ideas. This is what I wanted to say as an introduction. So I propose uh, to give floor to Roger Salia because together we participated in writing this monography and all our colleagues whom we've seen here, I uh, propose that you also say your word on the subject matter. Okay, uh, thank you, Nikolai. I'm very pleased to be here. Um, and uh, I fully agree with the uh, general ideas that Nikolai expressed, that we see this as a beginning of, a, of an intense collaboration within this preschool education, kindergarten area of uh, 
together exploiting and developing the ideas of uh, Vygotsky and the sociocultural, socio-historical school. And uh, we also think that uh, there's an, a dire need, an urgent need of comparative research uh, in these times of globalization and to learn from each other. And I think this conference and the uh, ESERA, the uh, European Early Childhood Education Research uh, Association, is a very good institutional framework for continuing that um, discussion or conversation. You always need an institutional framework for having discussions, and the ESERA provides a good uh, framework for that, I think, and for a discussion which is more systematic and uh, we perhaps can plan and coordinate research in different countries. So what we have done uh, is that we've asked uh, the people mentioned in the program to uh, make some initial comments on, on their perspective on this, not just on the book, but on the general idea of um, advancing studies in, the, uh, in this Vygotskian uh, tradition. And we have nine speakers, and given that it's already past uh, 10 o'clock, and to give space for some uh, discussion, some remarks and comments, I would urge the speakers to limit themselves to three to four minutes. Uh, and uh, I'm sure you have a lot of interesting things to say, but choose the things that you think are most relevant and most urgently need to be said here in this forum today. So we'll go in the order presented in the book, in the uh, program, except that Yoshi Kaga has asked to be, be last. She had to make some, uh, attend to some urgent matters, so she will come last. But uh, Anna Nieves Rosa, professor, you're there? Oh, hello, I didn't know it was you. Please, will you start? Do you have a microphone? We need a microphone, don't we? Yeah, the speakers should preferably sit in the front row, but we can't reorganize that. Yeah, but we, okay, it's the, uh, Sasha, you sit, uh, Alexander Veraska sits by a microphone, so you can start, and uh, Anna will reorganize herself, redistribute herself in the room. Maybe you can sit there, Anna. Anna, you can sit there. And we may... You, the order. Okay, okay, <laughs> that's an easy solution. So, you go first, Anna, please. And I will start waving when time is up. Well, um, my intention to collaborate with um, all those colleagues start with my interest in go ahead um, with Vygotsky ideas of how language or their relation with the context transform us or develop our internal skill, what we call um, mental ability. And we know now that our context changes so rapidly and our kids are telling us, they're telling us they are more um, related with the digital world and they know more about that stuff and the ability are related more with the use of the technology. So those are changing and transforming their cognitive ability. And we, are, we need to study that, is my point of view, because everything around us develop us. So if they are having a different world to what we had before, so we need to study that. We need to know it. What I think is maybe we are now have all the evidence to confirm the idea of Vygotsky that the internal frame of our psychological ability come from our relation with the context. So in this respect, I'm very interested to know that use the laptop and all the tech toys, it's changing our kids. Um, the movement, they use the fingers, not all the hands, that all things that he, he prefers to do. And we say that our ability to write and to speak or have language become of that development of the motor skill. And they're having a different way to relay or to use the motor skill. So if that change all that we know about 
literacy or, you know, the questions that I'm intrigued to, that I would like it to uh, keep research, keep doing research on that. So I come here to learn from you and to share what we have been done in Puerto Rico, where I come from. And um, we, I start working with uh, primary, school, primary school kids with um, hyperactive behavior. Mm -hmm. We just try different things. We use um, self-speech and um, regulation of behavior. And they, they just doing well. It's that we need to try something different. They did, and their hyperactive behavior just been better. No more hyperactive. I mean, I say they gain self regulation of their behavior. Then I start thinking maybe we, if we start earlier um, with the kids, we can have a better improve of their own knowledge about how their behavior develop, how they gain all this ability in contact with other people. So now I'm start working with earlier kids. So. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. That was exactly <laughs> three minutes. Thank you very much. We go on to uh, Professor Alexander Veraksa from Moscow. What are your comments? Спасибо. Thank you very much. Dear colleagues, esteemed colleagues, I'm very happy uh, that we have this opportunity of cooperating, uh, and that's in relation with the book published. Uh, so what we have been doing, actually, is an attempt to, to experimentally see the uh, possibilities of using Vygotsky's theory in order uh, to develop uh, the uh, randomness in children. Also, we have uh, Sergei Leonov present here, together with our colleagues, and we try to use this as an experiment, cultural uh, skills for physical development of children, though it's the psychological uh, one of the psychological, psychological uh, topics of the Russian school, but uh, still it's an experimental proof of how to uh, use cultural means for development of physical skills in the educational context that is probably not very typical for some cognitive accents. In the area of child education, we are talking about physical skills, but it was very interesting for us, and it proves some ideas of Vygotsky about the, uh, the process of using cultural uh, skills and mastery of the child of these uh, skills leads to a comprehensive development that we can see in various areas. That was a very interesting piece of work, and we are grateful to our colleagues for this opp opportunity. And we hope that our first steps, our first initial steps, will be the foundation of further research. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we, we continue to Professor Cooper, who is, I think, down there somewhere. Please. Let me at the outset say I am not a, uh, an expert in this area, but uh, my colleagues, uh, and especially the Secretary General of the International Union, Anne Watts, is uh, a protege of uh, the trio of Vygotsky, uh, Leontiev, and Luria. Uh, in, in my country, in Zulu, there is a phrase which says uh, umuntu umuntu ngabantu that basically means a person becomes a person through other people talking about socialization and there is a close affinity between uh, the emphasis that Vygotsky placed on the social 
uh, environmental and cultural context for development. What is also very, very important, particularly for developing world contexts, is the debate on instruction and development. Are they coterminous? Are they independent processes? And I can see the relevance of the Vygotskian approach, uh, which places instruction as a clear underpinning of uh, development. The period in which Vygotsky did his primary work has changed uh, over the last 90 years and engaging with online and other uh, new learning mechanisms and tools becomes vitally uh, important for us to consider. Uh, a final point I want to make is the perennial battle between individualism versus the collaboration that Vygotsky speaks about and how uh, a child essentially, and here he obviously has confined himself to the Russian context of the early 1900s, in many other developing contexts there's a tendency for collaborative rather than highly competitive individualistic education. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we continue to Professor Smirnova, please. Uh, I would like to say from uh, describing the chapters in this book to describing the problems. Nikolai uh, posed a problem, a question about the contests uh, which were created by Vygotsky. So I think that the main idea in this work is the self-development, uh, independence, self-reliability, not probably in the actions and activities, but in mentality, uh, in the choosing one's own way, and so on. And the foundation of this of it is built in the preschool age, that independence. So uh, the act, any act, starts not with a thing, but with a thought. And the preschool orientation should be related to this uh, tendency. Uh, unfortunately, it's not implemented in all the cases, at least not in our country very often, the preschool education provides guidance, uh, leadership for a child, uh, and limits the initiative and self-development of the child. And another context of uh, today are the digital technologies, which um, are introduced into the child's life. Well, on the one hand, it, uh, Ray, it also develops independence because they can use the gadgets from the age of two or three. On the other hand, they become the prisoners of the application uh, that is downloaded into that, for instance, tablet uh, or a gadget and so on. So the question is, can the digital technologies become the self-regulatory means? According to Vygotsky, um, it is the means of self-regulation. So is it possible to make this turn using these uh, technologies? And how much uh, it, uh, these technologies can arrange uh, the zone of proximity? How they can, can compensate the lack of communication with the adults or the cancelling of plays uh, what we see everywhere now. So these are the challenges of the modern time, and uh, this must become uh, the subject of our consideration and our research. Thank you very much. Uh, continue to Professor Vladimir Zopkin from Moscow as well, please. Thank you very much.
I appreciate very much that uh, this book had been published. I remember that it took several t uh, years. Uh, this book was re-edited and corrected and revised several times. I believe that this was hard work and I feel obliged and uh, thankful to the people who assumed that responsibility. So this is my appreciation to Nikolai Evgenich and to you. And uh, uh, speaking on uh, on the subject mentioned by Elena Legovna, well, I'm not going to mention my article, uh, uh, actually what it is about. In general, there are very simple things distribution of free time between uh, the parents and the children, how this free time is implemented um, while uh, the child is growing, how the situation of uh, cultural interchange is um, uh, varies uh, depending on the play, on the mood and feelings of the child. Well, it is quite kind of uh, trivial to consider the child uh, separately from uh, the communication with the social environment and the parents. Indeed, in this case, we lose uh, fundamental moments related to the development of a child. And uh, the proximal zone of development, in particular the social environment, I think this is the central point um, that is contained in the works of Vygotsky. But when we talk about the social uh, situation of the development and the change of the relation um, child-parents, and Vygotsky describes this as, as, uh, as the change of uh, the senses and uh, feelings of uh, the teenager, uh, how uh, the teenager feels the change in the relations with the environment. In uh, the view of Mr. Vygotsky, this is the core of the understanding of the present situation. I think that certain bias towards this point will be very important because quite a lot of subjects uh, are concentrated here, and this is related to the other works of Vygotsky, the psychology of art, and the understanding of uh, the dramatic development of human relations, as the scenarios putting into reality the trajectory of development. And I would like to draw the attention to the idea of Vygotsky when he uh, divides uh, the level of development and the sphere of development. Uh, the level of development indeed is the uh, expressions of will and as to the type of development, this is different. And uh, please pay attention that the, in the typology of development of a child, um, it is uh, separate, uh, several spheres are separated and uh, the types of development of uh, uh, workers' family and uh, the higher society families are divided. And I think this is very important to catch uh, this specific types of the social development. And in my view, this could be a very interesting addition uh, to compare Vygotsky and Bakhtin. The comparison of these two personalities will be interesting when we discuss the problem of the child psychology. I wrote quite a lot about it. Uh, for the teenagers, but the comparison of Bakhtin and Vygotsky ideas for preschool uh, child period will be in very in interesting. This is chronotop. Uh, this is the key notion of Vygotsky, the complexity and uh, completeness of uh, the environment. And in my view, this can define the type of development. I think this is very important. Well, let me finish with this because we have a short 
statements. And uh, the second uh, idea of uh, Bakhtin is the idea of the cultural borderline. He wrote that culture uh, is understood at the borderline. And in this sense, uh, this uh, book allows to understand the situation in the cultural and uh, historical psychology to, to have a look from different positions. And in my view, it could be important uh, that within our community we could uh, organize joint research and using uh, similar methods we could compare the types of social and cultural development for example in Russia in Germany in uh, Sweden in the United States in uh, South African Republic and I think this uh, you, if it would be interesting if you could lead such a cross-culture research program. Coming, can we uh, go on to uh, Oslo? Professor Francisco Pons is sitting down there somewhere. Ah, uh, okay. Sorry. Uh, so I'm very happy to be here. Um, um, uh, I see myself as somebody who has to learn a lot about Vygotsky. So um, to explore my proximal zone of, of development to, together with uh, all the experts in this room. I'm coming uh, from Geneva at the intellectual level. And uh, we were told that uh, Vygotsky uh, was the, the enemy, uh, meaning that uh, Piaget knew uh, about the work uh, of Vygotsky and Vygotsky knew about the work of Piaget, but um, uh, Vygotsky commented the, the work of Piaget and then um, he passed away and then uh, Piaget discovered the, the, the remarks, the very sharp remarks that Vygotsky addressed um, uh, against his theory and, um, and then he answered, but Vygotsky was not there anymore to to answer to the, 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 the critic. So I, I felt always a bit um, frustrated. Uh, uh, so I have to say that uh, I'm very happy uh, to, to be here and to, to be exposed uh, to the work of, of Vygotsky because um, uh, I, I see it as uh, the missing link uh, between uh, a very microscopic uh, approach of uh, cognitive development uh, the, the one developed by Piaget, uh, the, the Piaget from the 30s, because uh, in the 20s, uh, Piaget was quite Vygotskian in a way, and then he, he abandoned uh, the, the, the conception of cognitive development as being the result of a collaboration uh, between children, and then uh, he looked at the child as a lonely child interacting uh, with physical objects. And, so I, I, I see uh, Vygotsky as the, the missing link between really the, the microscopic approach of cognitive development um, uh, in the Piagetian way or the Neo-Piagetian way and a more, much more microscopic approach um, where we want to investigate the, the impact of cultural values and attitudes on uh, cognitive development. Uh, so uh, you, you have models like the one developed by, uh, I think he was a colleague of Vygotsky, Bronfenbrenner. So uh, I, I think the, it's really a, a powerful model, the Vygotsky model, maybe also together with uh, the model of Henri Vallon, who was a, a French philosopher, a Marxist, who also tried to integrate uh, the uh, the, the macro cultural approach to the micro uh, development and also to integrate emotions in uh, cognitive development. So uh, I think uh, Vygotsky has a really bright future uh, as the missing link between these uh, different levels. Thank you very much. Thank you, Francisco. And uh, on my right, we have Igor Sheehan. You Thank you very much. Uh, no, yeah. I have the honor to be the co-author of two chapters in this book. One is uh, 
uh, devoted to the psychology of pre preemption, and the second, uh, uh, the psychology of uh, preschool uh, education. And I had the honor of uh, conceiving this book in uh, Crete uh, in September 2014 during the conference of uh, uh, the European Association of uh, Preschool education. So there appeared the idea to publish the journal, and Lucy Nikolaevich was one of the initiators of this. Uh, but then it turned out uh, that uh, the idea, uh, the initial idea, was wider than the idea of the uh, journal. So it, passed, uh, it has passed only le less than four years, and the book appeared. For me, one of the main discoveries was to find uh, these two different perspectives that I mentioned uh, in the name of the book, uh, Western, uh, Eastern and Russian looks on uh, 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 this problem, and actually uh, Western idea is um, based on the uh, idea of the communication in uh, relations, uh, human relations. Uh, so we had quite a lot of discussion of uh, on these um, comparisons, uh, in particular with the Ivan Urs, the editor of the book, and I believe that there are different approaches and attitudes in any tradition. For example, Batman Rules or Akerselio, they wrote a lot about the means of communication. For me, this general approach seems uh, to have the good uh, foundations. And I think that as soon as we find uh, effective combination of these two attitudes, then uh, those who will be uh, more active uh, in their attitudes, uh, they will win. But, never, uh, in, but in the end, uh, the, the, the children will win, those uh, children who will be able to be developed in this paradigm. And one uh, more thing I want to mention that it was very interesting to communicate with our foreign co-authors. We had several meetings, and during one of them, uh, our Swedish colleagues uh, um, very politely uh, told us, you know, it is not always easy to get to the agreement with you because we write three or four pages, we send it to you, uh, the draft uh, form, but then we don't have uh, feedback from you for two or three uh, weeks and then in uh, in a month time, you send back already 20 pages of the final text because, uh, and it is difficult to treat it. Well, uh, this is kind of a comparison of our approach to writing the culture texts. I think this observation is also important. And uh, finally, I want to mention, continuing Vladimir um, Sotkin uh, comment, I want to say that month, a month ago, um, a number of uh, part of the authors got together in Göteborg, and uh, there appeared uh, a audacious idea to write the second volume uh, with the experience of cross-cultural uh, research um, in two or three countries, and. Uh, in the initial book, I saw only one chapter with this methodology in two countries, but we expect continuation. Because I was listening to the translation. Yes, uh, yes. and then we have Olga Sheehan on the other side, please. Я тоже очень рада, что появился опыт такого интересного участия в этом проекте и. Very glad that uh, this experience appeared of participation in this project, and our participation uh, included a small research for a limited group of uh, Russian and Swedish children, and. Uh, 
as to Vygotsky's conclusion, uh, this is the uh, challenge of the two focal points, the value of a chi- values of a child and values of the culture. And if we look at uh, uh, the psychological uh, discourse now, uh, sometimes we um, get to certain biases. Either we follow the child or we follow the cultural pattern, patterns. And it is very difficult to stick to the middle. Uh, it means not to find uh, some intermediate point, but this is to, f- uh, to find the combi- combined approach to give uh, culture to the child, but not limiting him, uh, allowing the child uh, to become a creative person. And Vygotsky was one of the first to uh, talk about the values of the value of the childhood, of uh, the importance of the childhood. And uh, my research was related to the phenomenon of certain phenomenon. And the point is that this phenomenon is not in uh, scrutiny of uh, the wide psychological community. These are the uh, children uh, narratives and children stories. In the Western uh, community, they are under research, but they are still not considered as uh, important in Russia. But the point is that through creation of narrative uh, stories, uh, this is how the children get to the culture. In our research, uh, we were not looking at the cross-cultural differences. We were looking in... Uh, we were looking at the universal things. And this is uh, this similar to Vygotsky because he was trying uh, to look for universal things uh, and it was interesting for us to understand how the structure is expressed in uh, uh, children's stories, how they can uh, rotate or change uh, the situation in the stories, how they can use uh, the pictures and uh, words. We had uh, a small selection, only 11 uh, children in each country, but this was uh, interesting enough uh, for the interpretation of the stories and for the analysis. We found certain universal things and uh, notions. It is. Uh, it gives us lots of hope because this uh, shows that um, Uh, This approach helps uh, a child to create new approaches. And I hope that this can be the uh, new chapter in the next volume of the research. I hope it will come out. So you go up there and speak from there, please. Um, I just have one slide, so just a moment. Um, Okay. So thank you for inviting me to speak uh, at this very interesting session. I would really like to express my congratulations to uh, the editors and the the authors uh, of this uh, excellent book. Uh, I didn't know about it, so uh, I really would like to buy it myself and study and and, uh, become more versed with the theories of Vygotsky. Um, I'm speaking um, as, a, as a person, as a specialist uh, working in an international organization uh, which is uh, attempting to co- uh, promote collaboration th- through different mechanisms and uh, among different stakeholder groups. Um, so uh, this is uh, with this perspective that I, I just like to uh, provide some thoughts about what could be done in terms of promoting cooperation on this subject. Um, so um, as, as, um, as far as my experience goes, uh, well, I mean, I've, I've been in the field for 
about 20 years uh, uh, supporting international development in terms of early childhood. And of course, uh, Vys Vygotsky is really one of the most important and, and most cited uh, theorists uh, uh, when we talk about early childhood development and care. Um, of course, uh, the, his mentioning uh, is really underpinning uh, the importance and the rationale for investing more in early childhood care and education, which is of quality, um, ensuring learning, quality learning environments, ensuring uh, quality social relationships uh, between children and those who are around them. Uh, so this is really, I think, key uh, and uh, something that uh, that has to that we have to be reminded, or I have to be reminded myself, uh, that uh, Vygotsky's theory has really played an important role at the international development uh, scene. Um, so I just like to um, suggest some of the possibilities for cooperation uh, with regard to uh, uh, Vygotsky's uh, theory and the promotion of them uh, in practice and policies. Um, so we have different mechanisms and different program areas uh, uh, within UNESCO. Um, so one of the things that I, I would like to suggest um, is to um, is to to have the UNESCO chairs uh, working on early childhood care and education uh, come together, uh, and 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 that uh, you uh, will be the key persons and key uh, agents uh, for. Uh, for promoting a better understanding of uh, uh, the importance of Vygotsky theories and how they can be put in, in, into practice. And I, I appreciated the comment from uh, Professor Cooper, who was referring to, referring to developing country context. And I think that uh, uh, with the, was uh, getting together through the UNESCO chair network, I think uh, we, we will be able to uh, encourage uh, collaborations and and uh, knowledge exchange. Um, I like to let you know that, uh, as far as I remember, uh, uh, there are about seven or eight UNESCO chairs that are working partly or entirely on early childhood. One is uh, the UNESCO chair on er early childhood education for sustainable development, which is held at the Gothenburg University. There is uh, another uh, UNESCO Chair, which is based in Canada, Victoria University, uh, which is essentially working for the development of Africa. Uh, there is another chair in Canada, uh, which is working on early interventions uh, and detection. And so um, there are more than that. So, but uh, UNESCO hasn't had the opportunity to really tap on this network of UNESCO chairs. So I, I, I thought that this would be sort of um, uh, an excellent starting point for thinking more about how I, uh, we, un as UNESCO, can can make use of uh, this network and and add value to what we are trying to do. Um, uh, I just listed some of the events that are coming up, which might be very relevant to uh, introducing Vygotsky's ideas. For example, we have a UNESCO Global Forum on Peace and Sustainable Development in March uh, coming up. Uh, what are the relevance of the, his thoughts, his his uh, suggestions? There is also um, um, uh, the 25th anniversary of Salamanca Statement, which is on inclusive education, which is coming up next year. So UNESCO is uh, now instituting a process towards preparation for this organizing this uh, global forum, um, you know, putting together good practices and, and research uh, evidence. Um, so I would like to invite you to be part of uh, this process and then really bring to the contribution uh, what are the relevance of Vygotsky's theories and, and uh, proposals uh, with regard to early education, but of course uh, um, beyond early education and sort of community development, social development. Thank you very much. Thank you, Yoshi. This is really an impressive uh, number of contexts in which to carry these uh, activities forward. Thank you. Uh, we. I will open for a seminar soon, but we first have a comment of by Vera Brofman, I think. What language is taken? I will talk about it in Russian.
I will speak Russian because uh, we have translators. They're going to excellent four minutes first. Thank you very much, and uh, I want to give a lot of uh, thanks to uh, the editors of this collection, uh, Alexander Virox and Sheridan, because you can't, can't imagine how difficult it was and what a fantastic job uh, they managed to do. Because frankly speaking, I didn't quite believe that this book will find its way to the reader, and I'm really happy because it's a surprising event. And I'm not only talking about uh, Vygotsky and being aware of Vygotsky, knowing in St. Petersburg. Well, he's known in here in uh, Switzerland. We are followers of Freud. But here we're talking about cooperation, joint research. And this book is going to be on a lot of disks. And the question only is, is it the beginning or the end? Good. I'm very happy. This book is just the beginning, and it is to be continued. This is very important, because there were some books edited by Kazuli in the States and some others. For myself, I really enjoyed it a lot. It was lots of fun, because my research was over by that time. I uh, worked in Harlem, if you understand what's going on. You know, getting to Harlem, Harlem, it's next to impossible. But I'm not going to talk about it. I want to talk about something which is really important. We don't only have Vygotsky, but the disciples of Vygotsky, the whole school in Russia of Vygotsky, disciples, disciples of disciples, and so Elkonin, Luria, Galperin, Davidov, Zaporozhets, Lisina. I looked up at Yelena uh, now. They are not well known, almost not known. No one knows what they did. I'm uh, a disciple of uh, Vengerov, and who was uh, the disciple of Zaporozhets, and that's us. We are typical, and it would be a great pity to lose the traditions of our school. They need to be inherited because modeling, visual modeling, that's uh, Leonid Vengerov. He investigated that and are implemented some of the methodologies, programs of development of talented children uh, with psychological orientation. And that was the preschool kindergarten in Harlem. We devoted several years to this. And also the diagnostics, which we couldn't carry out here. Vexla, it's uh, done only on an individual basis. So the idea of that universal tools of mediation in our understanding, it proved to be right. Only we need to look for how, why, what, uh, what, what should be the purpose. So when you come out there, you need to know what you want to get. And of course, like any researcher, I was not thinking about description. I was thinking about just results, whether I can do it, I cannot do it, whether it's a success or a failure. So whether the results uh, are independent. And by the way, we have parents who are very poor, who live in uh, the shelters and so on. But then uh, Nikolai offered me to write. He uh, suggested that I should write a chapter of this book. And I started thinking how to make it understandable, accessible, interesting. And this communication really uh, gave birth to new instruments and means. Thank you very much, Nikolai. That was ob absolutely right. Thank you all. Uh 
commentators uh, for these uh, remarks. We now have uh, 40 minutes, roughly, uh, for uh, questions and comments. And this is now a seminar. And a seminar means that you clarify things. You try to see if the claims made are substantiated and so on. And then not just argue your own position, but engage with these topics of uh, Vygotsky in, in uh, both the work presented here, but also as a tool for, for future collaboration and work uh, together. So I open the floor, please. Do we have to speak in, into the microphones? The, the yeah, people who, for the, who for ask the questions. Yeah. yeah. So you have to have a microphone uh, available when you raise your question. Yes, please, from Germany. Ursula. Yes. Uh, Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, thank you uh, for this uh, uh, book and this uh, very important dialogue between uh, different kinds of uh, orientation in preschool education and to bringing them together. Uh, my uh, question is, uh, I understand that uh, what uh, the Swedish, maybe Western, a position uh, points out the value of the individual child and the value and really listen to child's initiative and really answering to this child's initiative is very important. And as Elena Smirnova says, the uh, independent mental uh, uh, development, but it does not mean um, uh, that, uh, but as I understood, the richness of cultural tools, uh, and that's my question, maybe needs different kinds of learning situations to get into the ability to use them really. Uh, I give me uh, an example. Uh, even if I am adult, uh, when I want to uh, play an instrument or uh, learn dancing, I don't want a dance teacher who never shows me anything. And uh, so I think uh, this uh, talking about a teacher as a leading person is a Russian tradition, I know, and it has many problems in several situations. I've seen them. And I understand that you want to uh, look at this child's initiative, but I think uh, it's necessary to know in which moment or in which situation it is useful to show something. Uh, otherwise, the uh, Western style may be uh, too focused on spoken language and on arguing and thinking about something. There are so many ways to express uh, a meaning and create meaning, and I don't know if I misunderstand this uh, thinking about uh, cultural tools and cultural and historical situation and context in which uh, uh, people live. And uh, my question is, how can we bring these two things or this complex uh, pedagogical strategies to get together so that we uh, can learn from each other. That is my question. Okay, vielen Dank. Um, who wants to answer or to address the question? Any one of the authors? Or I, I can start. Or attempt to start this. I think you are pointing to something very important, but um, uh, to me, if you understand this in a, in a historical perspective, the new tools enrich the capacities for communication and, and they do not limit them. Uh, children at very early age now can communicate both with people face to face, but they can also do it through various media and, and so on. So it's not a matter of uh, reducing the variety. And as you say, the resources for uh, the nature of cultural tools have diversified immensely 
uh, in this digital situation, but it actually started uh, before that. But uh, the idea is always how to put this into pedagogical practices, because it's not the very uh, activity of engaging with them necessarily, which is good, but if it's part of a, of a plan, <laughs> of an idea, of a developmental project, then they become important. Uh, and I think this tension between uh, focusing more on the communicative part or focusing more on the developmental part is something we should uh, we should work with and address i think both parts are necessary to have in the in the uh, development is also an international in, an internalization or a, an appropriation at the level of the individual and it, there are developmental paths and how can we enrich uh, these experiences for children both collectively but uh, both and also individually but the, the point of the Vygotskyan tradition is not is not to take these apart not to take the individual out of the situation or the situation out of the individual but to see them as related and we need systematicity we need pedagogical practices that um, you know employ these uh, resources and tools and it has to be a sustained forms of interaction many things take a long time to learn like you mentioned music for instance to practice music takes a long time and if we don't have the teacher present and the teacher as the leader uh, it won't happen it won't, if, if you give as, as we discussed yesterday if you give just give ki the kids these tools it goes in any direction it is not necessarily an a, a sort of a development and appropriation of advanced uh, skills or advanced cultural tools so we have pedagogical situations uh, and I think we have more of them than previously actually that was my first question now who wants to address this yeah uh, I think Ursula posed a very interesting and very acute question, and by the way, Olga touched upon it uh, somewhat, the balance between the freedom, freedom and independence, and uh, the guidance or leadership in mastering cultural norms. I think these are two uh, opposites, and we uh, shouldn't uh, take one or the other. I think the path that we should take lies with the interests, uh, with the motives, uh, with the needs of the child. And the pedagogical line uh, should be aimed at the establishment, at building uh, the child's own interests and awareness. Because this is a very broad subject. Every teacher treats it differently, and the interests of uh, children are the basis of very many controversial and contradictory programs. For instance, in the Western tradition, they say that these interests are uh, primarily in the child, that the child is born with these ideas, that we need just to catch them and make them uh, be realized in real life. But uh, we uh, overlook some interests. Uh, we uh, sometimes think that what adults want, children also should want. This is an interesting psychological uh, question. How these interests are formed? Where do they get these interests? How the environment, teachers, parents arrange the uh, medium that uh, surrounds the motivations of the children. I think this is the problem that I don't know the answer for, but this is the focus. Thank you. Uh. Dear colleagues, I think that there is another layer of problems that relates to the terms that Vygotsky used to notions that Vygotsky use and uh, how uh, they do they need further development because if you look for instance at the zone of uh,
are facing a problem of the interaction of the natural and cultural. That is something that Vygotsky discovered, and uh, this is a theoretical problem. And I believe uh, the following. In this regard, I've got the following idea. I was uh, appreciate, I appreciated very much always that uh, Jean Piaget uh, used to hold a systemic seminar inviting uh, eminent specialists and experts in each of uh, the activities. Maybe we should think about this possibility to uh, set up uh, a seminar like this, because the research of uh, childhood development and uh, the childhood, um, this research is not taken only by pedag pedagogy or sociology, and it is not enough. We have to take into account different aspects of uh, childhood, for example, the health issues. And in this regard, if we um, have enough powers and uh, forces to hold such a seminar. Uh, this would be interesting. And uh, modern technologies allow to uh, maintain communications uh, remotely. Uh, so maybe we could hold uh, an event once in three months to discuss uh, relevant topics and to discuss uh, uh, potential joint projects. And this would be aimed at the understanding of uh, uh, the childhood and the uh, child problems. Uh, I think it is very interesting. And the figures that exist now at different levels, at, at, uh, at all levels, at economic level, at psychological level, at social uh, sociological level. So this uh, could be the beginning of uh, um, long-term approach and the beginning of uh, this uh, communication and talks because we have, we have got the feeling of the possibility of research by representatives of different countries. We already understand better how it can be organized. Of course, these are only first steps but we know already how it is organized. And I think that the research of childhood is uh, a, a subject uh, that depends not only on financing, but mostly on the willing uh, willingness of people who participate in this. So these are my ideas, and maybe we could discuss them and to find some uh, variants. Thank you. Thank you. Any more comments on this? Yes, Francisco? Yes, I would like to make a comment on um, this idea of uh, having a multidisciplinary approach and to integrate different perspectives to understand uh, the way the child uh, learns. I think a, a good intervention is an intervention which integrates uh, uh, many of these uh, different perspectives. Uh, children are the same, but at the same time they are also uh, very different. Uh, so uh, some children, when they are seeking information about the world, uh, they are going to ask uh, uh, the help of uh, an adult in a Vygotskian way, in a way. Uh, whereas other children, for different reasons, uh, they, they will try uh, not to rely on third-person testimony, but they will use first-hand experience to, to learn about the world. That means they are going to be piagetian. So I, I think a good intervention is an intervention that gives the possibility uh, to the children to, to use both strategy, the, the Vygotskian one and uh, the, the Piagetian one, to, to learn about the world. And we can see that uh, 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 maybe uh, uh, these individual differences in uh, strategies to seek information about the world, they can be related to other dimensions, like the attachment relationship between the child and the mother. That, 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 that means uh, depending the first experiences that you had in life uh, in thinking, seeking information about the world, uh, how you, your parents, the mother, uh, answer to that uh, uh, will have uh, an influence on the way you are going to, to seek information in the future. 
and we have been uh, conducting uh, some pilotings with uh, adults uh, lately, uh, showing that uh, uh, adults who are securely attached to their romantic partner, I'm not going to discuss about the link between attached to your boyfriend and girlfriend to be attached to your mother, but they, they, there's a link here. Uh, they have the, the, the tendency, uh, if they are securely attached, to trust what they are told about the world by third person, by default, if there is nothing going against their first-hand experience. But as soon as it goes against their first-hand experience, they have no difficulties to abandon the testimony from a third person. Whereas uh, uh, ambivalent children who are attached in an ambivalent way uh, to their romantic partner, that means ambivalent adults uh, who are afraid uh, to be abandoned, they have the tendency to, uh, to follow what they are told, whatever, even if it goes in contradiction with their first-hand experience. So they are, in a way, a bit uh, hyper Vygotskian. Whereas the, the third group, the avoidant one, the one who doesn't want to depend uh, on the other person in the romantic relationship, uh, they have the tendency not to trust by default what they are told uh, by, by other people. So maybe they are good scientists, in a way, they, they are very <laughs> piagetian, but I think there, there is a, a, a quite interesting line of research to, to look in the emotional relationship between the child and the mother, or the child and the pedagogue, in terms of attachment theory, using Bowlby theory, to explain the individual differences in the way children, they, they are seeking uh, information about the world. First hand experience, the piagetian way, or third person testimony, the, the Vygotskian way. Thank you. Vladimir, uh, yeah. What, uh, we know it, yeah. Uh, well, Vladimir, uh, yes, you know, I've been working on early uh, works of uh, and research of uh, Lev Vygotsky uh, lately, and uh, he had some ideas of the identity forming, national identity and individual identity, and uh, it was very important for him the, uh, the notion of point of view, and this is also related to Bakhtin. How, how we describe the situation of a child, whether we describe it from outside or we uh, try to describe it from inside, in view of a child. For example, uh, if we talk about an exhibition of portrait, how the child was depicted by artists in different times, in 19th century, in uh, uh, later or earlier. They used, uh, there were several exhibitions like this, but there could be another exhibition, the drawings of child, of children uh, uh, in different periods. How, uh, because you mentioned similar thing about talking about na na narratives, how children see their families, their environment, uh, how a um, preschool child sees uh, uh, the environment in the year 60s, 70s, 80s, etc. And if we stick to the spirit of Vygotsky, then uh, this is the spirit of collecting of material from inside. Indeed, I agree with Nikolai, these are some ethnographical lines, not only pedag pedagogical or sociological approaches. This is the line of activity which allows us to maintain the specificity of social and cultural situation of uh, child. I remember 40 years ago I was in uh, Yerevan uh, in the museum of uh, uh, child ch children arts. Here uh, the uh, the museum had about 15,000 drawings of uh, children from different parts of the world from India from Africa from Europe. And uh, uh, these uh, p drawings were very heuristic, uh, and they depicted how uh, the children saw the world. Uh, 
So if we talk about cross-cultural points, this could be a very important line to hold and to maintain the uniqueness of uh, uh, the perception of life by different children. These, this can be done uh, by artists, by documentalists, but uh, besides that, we can try to find our own uh, approach to depict uh, certain aspects of childhood. And I think this is very important. It's my list, and then Olga. Okay, Olga. Well, uh, following up, I'm probably we're at the threshold of the new discovery of childhood. Because when we try to see the world in eyes of a child, this is not only to feel uh, naiveness and uh, niceness. But for us, uh, the researchers, it is very important also to understand the following. This is uh, the approach also drawn from Vygotsky. We understand that, uh, that the child can uh, uh, see something in the reflected light. The fault of the modern contemporary pedagogical science is that the child itself uh, is not interesting until the child grows up uh, to become uh, the uh, wise uh, mirror. Uh, it uh, the child will see very much. So it is important to see um, and to use different mirrors. Thank you. Did you want to say something? Yeah. It's talking about the mirrors and just a few words uh, what we discussed uh, with Lena Smirnova. Uh, we actually, there is a very uh, interesting word now, singularity. We are going to face this very soon. And in this regard, the child is going to change and uh, it already changes. Uh, very strongly. We cannot even imagine this. This is almost, this new child is almost an alien from space. We know, we don't know everything about the child from the very first days. Maybe we do not have enough eyes to see properly. Maybe we should engage younger students to research this. And uh, this component of the change, changing childhood, we are going to face this very fast if we have enough mirrors or optics. We see it already from the very first year of the child, when they sit not in the proper moment, when they look at us in the, uh, not in the traditional manner at six or eight months of age. And we have to understand better what is going on in the world. If it uh, comes true, this would be fantastic and very interesting task. Maybe we should engage also genetic scientists, biologists, because we are facing a very uh, complex problem uh, that we will not be able to model in the near future. They are our teachers. That's it from my side. Thank you. Any more questions or comments? Any? Yeah, Ursula again. Uh, only one point about uh, you, what you and Vladimir said about the drawings. I, I think drawings or maybe stories are very interesting medium. We can try to read because children reflect their experience and express something about themselves. But it's not only the voice of the child. Uh, it uh, shows us also uh, what the child uh, has uh, abilities to express him or herself. And in our Western tradition, teachers are never allowed to take a pencil or to show a, 
any kind of drawing. And uh, it was very amazing to see it here in Russian kindergarten uh, or even in Garage or Pushkin Museum how to work with children. And first I was scared. Oh, they show them how to draw. But it's one moment and they try to understand what kind, what can I express with this kind of drawing. But afterwards, the child can use very different kinds of drawing to express his or herself and express an individual um, experience. And so I think we need uh, both the, the time for showing and time for giving uh, the possibility to learn about the culture and context and the meaning because it's a richness of life we share and we feel close with other people when we understand in such a cultural tool as singing a song or such uh, making a theater play and that I want to add. Thank you. Any more comments? I think this question which underpins some of this discussion of whether children are objects of research or whether children are subjects is a very important uh, topic and uh, we have seen, both, I think both Piaget and Vygotsky have done much to show us that children are subjects. They are not just objects of research. And I think as you move on ahead, in, you see that the child's perspective is, has been reinforced and better understood. Actually it started at the Enlightenment, we discovered childhood and now we see that we have a respect for childhood. It's not just merely a, a passage in life until you grow up, but it's, it's a very important uh, form of life, form of development. I think this is, and this is uh, also an ethical question for research, how to, you know, how to maintain this in our studies. So more questions, comments? Uh, I would like to continue these topics. Actually, we uh, are observing children, all of us, and uh, what is uh, the uh, difference of uh, the uh, present children compared with those that were 15 or 20 years ago? Uh, recently, I spoke to some uh, pedagogical specialists uh, and they say that uh, children are indeed changing. They communicate less, they have less movement uh, and action, they have uh, big problems uh, with drawings. If we talk about uh, the children drawings, uh, I have a question whether the children would be willing to draw without the suggestion of uh, grown-ups or adults. Uh, so what are the models and approaches for observation of children? And what are they? I would like to support this. I think this is one of uh, the very important topics. Uh, the traditional childhood, the cultural childhood, and the modern childhood, digital childhood. What do we have now? Well, uh, we have a mother who have, uh, gave birth uh, with a sitting at the computer, and uh, the child also begins life with the computer. I'm not commenting on this, Valodya, because uh, singularity uh, promises, the word singularity promises that everything will be possible in the near future. Well, uh, I will not uh, like to uh, register the decrease of the level of development. Or maybe we should reconsider the norm, and or maybe we should say that the present digital environment holds back the development or transforms the development. Maybe we should then introduce new indicators, not the imagination, not the movement, and not the communication. What should be the indicators of development? Please turn on the microphone. Please ask uh, the speaker to turn on the microphone. So, uh, colleagues, 
when I listen uh, to us, the psychologists, I recall a very nice novel by Mikhail Bulgakov, Master and Margaret. Maybe you remember that uh, there is a scene where when Voland was uh, discussing the Moscovites. He said, well, I observe them, they are the same, but uh, the apartment matter has spoiled them. So I think that I, we give, uh, uh, probably we uh, give too much importance to the apartment matter, uh, forgetting to pay attention to universal moments, value moments that characterize the development of a child. So independence, for instance, and this is uh, the key fundamental line of human development. I uh, remember Pushkin's quote, uh, independent man is a great man. If we don't want to have uh, small kegs and a big wheel, then uh, if we want to have, like Vasily Davidov said, if you want to become a personality, that's a quote from Dostoevsky, then activity, motivation, forming one's own values and needs, that's the foundation. I'm talking about humanitarian area that defines the pedagogical line of developing a person in modern society. So are we giving up these values? Are we creating new values? Or are we retaining the old values? That's the key question, I think. What you are saying now, there is uh, actually an interesting story. You need space. Any child needs a space where he can develop as a personality. And it's a theoretical problem because, of course, it is related to creating the environment. But we need to think it over. I understand it's difficult because it's so multidimensional that it's uh, not easy to implement. It's not done with one word only. Okay, uh, more questions? More questions? Comments? A few words about uh, values. She's not talking to the I think that values are going to change by all means. It goes without saying, and we look at it because I went to the other conference, uh, 200 years of Marx theory, Das uh, Kapital then, and now whether it is still active. Everything is very interesting, by the way. This research is still alive. The values are going to change. We see it. What are we going to do with the changing values? We can say, OK, the consumer values, the independence values, and so on, they are going to be values. And there are traditions. And it's uh, something that we cannot avoid. We cannot go away from traditions in various versions. Uh, we don't know how they're going to exist. We don't know how they're going to develop. We don't know what uh, to do with the world of childhood, whether we are going to make it elite or like every day, every day ordinary. Uh, we are not uh, working with the Gauss uh, graph. We are working with a line, probably. Sometimes, are we talking human values or something? We need uh, an inventory and theoretical awareness, uh, theoretical recognition of what we have now. We cannot live with old values even now. So we need to uh, revisit. Uh, the image 
of a man. Uh, it's not necessary to have interaction. It, it's not necessary for men to communicate, uh, decency, uh, kindness, and so on. All these values are thrown away. Are we going to revisit all these values? You mean uh, there are ten commandments? That's a question. I don't know about the Ten Commandments. I think that in one way or another they're going to be uh, changed. Their forms are going to be changed somehow to accommodate modern life. Of course, decency may be, uh, may be different, uh, differently viewed today and yesterday and tomorrow. Or for instance, I don't know what uh, children are going to do in uh, certain situations. Of course, we don't know what the uh, Ten Commandments are going to do and where they face. I'm not talking about the segregation policy, but if we sink your position to the end, that's it. Uh, we'll have uh, the Gauss curve, we'll have selection, and I don't think so. I think that every person is a master of his or her life, and we need to give him or her an opportunity, like you said. We need to give him space for self-identification, and after that, the responsibility is on us. No one lifted this responsibility from our shoulders. I want just to repeat the philosophy, initiative, independence, and responsibility. Three pillars that uh, are the foundation of a personality. Initiative, independence, and responsibility. And it starts not uh, in the adult age. It starts at the very beginning. We as uh, psychologists, as teachers, we're not responsible only for ourselves, but also for those whom we tamed, whom we teach. Uh, we need to have orientations, and that's why the diagnostic, specific diagnostics issues that we're discussing. Now, because it's 10, 11.30, and uh, people have to move on. Uh, it's obvious that there are many issues uh, underneath here, but I think it's interesting to, uh, when we as researcher are looking at a development uh, of which we ourselves are part, and there's an enormous change in values, enormous change in orientations, and I wouldn't like to call, I, I wouldn't, uh, I mean this is part of social change, so I wouldn't, I'd be careful to evaluate modern development on the standards of previous de uh, developmental trajectories, because we see dramatic things happening, and it's our job to articulate that, and I think Vygotsky and Vygotskyan ideas can help us along those lines, as we've heard in this uh, heated discussion on, on values and development. So thank you very much. Thank you for coming and for participating, and we now go on to the next sessions. Thank you. Uh, I I would like to add a few words. Uh, we can exchange contacts and we can continue this dialogue uh, via correspondence. Uh, probably uh, we'll, uh, we'll be able to think 